Welcome back to our social psychology series, and today's video is going to be about the robber's cave experiment. Have you ever read the book The Lord of the Flies? A lot of people have to in middle school and high school, and even if you skimmed over the book, you might remember what it's about. A group of boys find themselves stranded on a desert island with no adult supervision, and as they try to establish some form of society, they turn on each other in desperation, and things get brutal. Now this book has become a staple of young adult fiction and is known for being a reflection of society. It warns that anyone has the potential to get violent if they're desperate enough for scarce resources. Lord of the Flies came out in 1954, and the year before, the Rockefellers gave psychologist Muzaffar Sharif $38,000 to conduct a fascinating research experiment. Basically what happened was he was tired of working with lab rats, and he set out to do something unusual, an experiment that one could say mirrored Lord of the Flies. So this experiment, once known for its fascinating insight into group conflict theory, is now more infamous than famous. And regardless of its reputation, it remains as one of the most well-known social psychology experiments of the 20th century. Basically, Sharif wanted to show how easily groups could turn on each other when they were fighting for limited resources. But he also wanted to show how easily these groups could set aside their differences and come together to defeat a common enemy. Observing these group dynamics couldn't be done in a lab with rats or dogs. So what he did was he experimented on his summer camp. The 22 boys at Robbers Cave State Park did not know that their summer camp experience would actually be part of a larger social experiment. They didn't even know how many people would be at the camp until the second day. So on the first day, researchers posing as counselors established two groups of campers, the Eagles and the Rattlers. After the boys bonded within their own groups, they were introduced to the other group. And the researchers set up a series of competitions over the next couple days, like baseball games and tug of war. The winners received prizes, and the losers would receive nothing. Eventually, they began to set up additional conflicts. For example, one group got access to food, while the others were told to wait. You might know what happens then. The boys eventually started to develop an us versus them mentality, something that I've already went over in my in-group and out-group bias videos. And at first, they only exchanged threats and engaged in verbal conflict. However, quickly, things became more physical. One group literally burned the other group's flag, and the other group responded by raiding their cabin and stealing items from the boys in that group. Things eventually got violent. In surveys during this period, the boys shared negative thoughts and stereotypes against the boys in the other group. This proved the first part of Sharif's theory. But he wasn't done. The robber's cave experiment then went into a final friction reduction phase. All 22 boys were given tasks that would benefit the group as a whole. To help with this, the researchers set up a challenge in which a truck delivering food was stuck and it couldn't deliver the meals. So the boys had to work together to get the truck unstuck so they could all eat. It gave them a sense of camaraderie. And in another challenge, the boys formed an assembly line to remove rocks that blocked access to the camp's water tower. Even though the boys had originally felt hostile towards the boys in the opposing group, they were able to work together to reach a goal that would benefit the whole group. Now, this is interesting to me because it shows how easily conflict can turn to shared interest. I remember feeling somewhat similar when my parents got divorced. Most divorces aren't pretty, and the same with mine, although my parents never took it out on me or my sister. And around the same time, my sister actually started having seizures. Nobody knew why. It's the curse of epilepsy. But it was amazing to see my mom and my dad stop arguing and join together to do whatever was needed to figure out how to help my sister. Anyways, while I was writing this script, it just reminded me of that. So the robber's cave experiment would then go on to be key evidence of something called the realistic conflict theory. Donald Campbell coined this term a few years after Sharif's experiment. And at the time, psychologists had talked about group conflict using sex and food and other basic needs as motivations, since they were very primal. But Campbell broadened this theory to include larger goals and a wider categorization of resources. Thus, research conflict theory is based on the assumption that group conflict will become tense whenever these groups must compete for limited resources. These resources could be food, but they could also be things like respect or power or even recognition. And this tension can then lead to stereotyping, violence, and other extreme forms of behavior. So moving on, I want to talk a little bit about the criticisms of this experiment. The Robber's Cave experiment has become one of the most well-known experiments due to its questionable ethics. Now, the purpose of an experiment is to test a hypothesis. If you can't support your hypothesis with your experiment, the problem is with your hypothesis, not the experiment 
experiment itself. And when a psychologist approaches an experiment as a way to prove their hypothesis, things can get really tricky. There's quite a few critics out there that say what Sharif did with the Robbers Cave experiment was ethically immoral and psychologically unsound. But I think context is important here because before the famous Robbers Cave experiment, Sharif conducted a similar experiment at a camp called Middle Grove, but the results didn't work out the way he thought they would. The boys never turned on each other. The bond they had made at the camp before the experiment was too strong. The counselors and Sharif set up pranks to put the boys against each other, but the boys ended up turning on the counselors instead. They eventually figured out that they were actually being manipulated. And these results were thrown out and only came to light in recent years. And with these new findings, psychologists began to refrain from using Robbers Cave experiment as an example in textbooks and lectures. So in other words, the first experiment didn't work out how Sharif wanted it to, so he made it happen again to have results that supported his belief. And while Robbers Cave Theory's most well-known experiment is no longer known for maybe being ethically sound, there's still evidence to support this theory. A lot of the evidence comes from data related to racial tensions and immigration policy. In 1983, a paper was published on the opposition to school busing and integration. Data taken around that time supported the idea that opposition to busing wasn't just fueled by racism itself. Group conflict motives also played a role. The threat of another group, so to say, taking scarce resources, which in this case is access to education, scared white people during that time period. And we hear similar arguments in the present day. Have you ever heard one of your relatives or talk show commentators argue that immigrants are taking our jobs? Never mind the validity behind that threat, the perceived threat is enough to cause hostility and tension among some people. And as more data and experiments look to realistic conflict theory, psychologists may change their perspective on intergroup conflict and other related topics. But for now, the Robbers Cave experiment offers an important reminder that experiments cannot be conducted simply to prove a hypothesis. It also shows how powerful the us versus them phenomenon is. And as I end this video, I want to encourage you to check out my other videos on social psychology, as I put a ton of work into them, and they're quite eye-opening into the human psyche. Thank you guys so much for watching, and leave a comment below if you have any questions.